Hi, my name is Paul and welcome to the Learning Nets. In this video we're going to talk about the three key functions of a switch. Okay, so let's start. Well, switches need to learn MAC addresses. Why do they need to learn MAC address? Well, for, to, for um, devices to have end-to-end -end communication, we need to go through the seven layers of the OSI model, and typically at some point we'll get to layer three, and we will know about the destination's IP, because either I've typed in a name or I've typed in an IP address for me to find him, but I will not know initially about his layer two address, his MAC address. So I would need to learn that. So what... Um, in this example, PCA would need to do to discover PCB's MAC address is send out an ARP, an address resolution protocol. And all that is, is a broadcast that goes across the network saying, who has this IP address? Every device will receive it. And if you look at your network cards on your PCs in your organization, you'll see the network light will flicker just once. Uh, and eventually one of them will say, hey, that's my IP address. And it will reply with its own MAC address associated with that IP address. And that's how we communicate end-to-end -end on our Ethernet networks. Switches are a key part of that process, and switches remember uh, MAC addresses. They remember what port MAC addresses came in from, and that way they can make quick decisions um, on where to send information around the network. So let's look how they learn that. When switches first um, boot up, the MAC address tables are empty, and that's where they store the MAC address, obviously, in its MAC address table, or its CAM table, its context accessible memory table. It will store the information that it's learned in there. That information is stored in RAM, so obviously when the switch reboots, it loses that information. So it'd have to relearn everything all over again. Okay, so in this instance, the switch has just restarted. I've got two computers connected to my switch. A wants to talk to B. The very first thing that A is going to do is do an ARP, and at this point, the ARP is going to hit port 1, and the switch is going to go look at this. I've just received a frame on port 1 with a source MAC address of A. So he's going to mark on port 1. Well, that's where... Uh, PCA lives, that's where that MAC address belongs. It will then send a broadcast out all its ports because that is the rule. Whenever I receive a broadcast, I must send the broadcast out on all the ports apart from the port from where it came. Okay, so in this instance, it will send out all the, all the ports, uh, including port 24 where PCB is attached. PCB will say, yes, this is my IP address. Here we go, take my MAC address. Okay, and this is where the switch will now learn. Well, look at this. I've just received a frame from PCB on port 24. And it'll put that down in its MAC address table as PCB's MAC address on port 24. And that's how they learn about each other. So all the devices will do this initially. And the switch will record all the devices' source MAC addresses and all the ports they belong to. And then eventually, once uh, this process is, is completed, the switch can now make its first intelligent decision. So whenever A needs to talk to B, it doesn't have to do that process all over again. It's just going to send the information directly between port 1 and port 24, because that's all that needs. To, that they are the only two devices that need to communicate with each other in this instance. That's how they make, that's how they learn MAC addresses, and that's how they make intelligent decisions. Okay, so um, in this example, as you can see, yes, switch A and switch B know about each other. They're just going to send information to each other. That's their first intelligent choice. Uh, or decision, if I add more switches to my network, if I add more computers to my network, and I connect them all together, we still need to uh, learn those MAC addresses, and we still need to make intelligent decisions based on what we've learned. So in this example now, PCB already has an entry on switch 1, so switch 1 will not mark um, PCB down when PCB wants to talk to PCC. Okay, so if PCB talks to PCC, the first ARP is going to go out, no problem. The rule says let's send out all our ports, which is going to go down port 50. Port 50 is connected to switch number 2's port 50, and this is the, uh, where switch number 2 is going to say, look at this, I've just received a frame from PCB. I'm going to mark that down in my MAC address table on port 50, and that's what he does. He then, of course, has to send out all of his ports. And at this point, hopefully, there's a PC on the switch that has this IP address, and it's going to respond. And in this instance, it's PCC, and he's attached to port 14. And now switch 2 is going to learn that PCC's MAC address is on port 14. Okay, now he needs to get to PCB. Is he going to do another broadcast? Well, no. He already has an entry in his MAC address table for PCB, and that is out port 50. So he's going to send it directly out port number 50. And here's where switch number one realizes, look at this. I've just received a frame on my port 50 with a source MAC address of PCC. So he'll mark it in his MAC address table as port 50 for that MAC address. And that's how we make um, intelligent decisions. That's how we learn MAC addresses. So now when PCB wants to talk to PCC, they just need to communicate via their own ports and port 50. Nothing else, no one else needs to get involved. 
Okay, and the third thing that switches need to do is prevent loops on your network. So what is a loop? Well, if you look at the example that I've given you, um, I've got users on the top, servers on the bottom, and I've got one link between these two um, switches. If that link were to fail, all my users couldn't talk to any of my servers, which is a problem. It's a poor design. So obviously we are going to include some form of resiliency. And whenever I add resiliency, this is where I add a loop. Okay, so as you can see, I've added another link, and if I add that link, I've effectively created a loop because uh, those initial broadcasts or those initial ARPs from the um, top switch are going to go down my my uh, main link, but they're also going to go back up the link I've just added. I mean, that is the rule. The rule says if I receive a broadcast, I must send out all my ports, and that would include the uplink that I've just added to this um, to this network, uh, the redundant link that I've just added. So again, the top switch is going to say, well, look at this. I've just received another broadcast on its um, port. Uh, I'm going to send it out all my ports as well. It's going to send it back down to the bottom switch. And I think you can see where I'm going. The bottom switch is going to receive this broadcast and say, okay, well, the rule says send out all my ports. And he's going to send it back to the top. And the top's going to receive it. He's going to send it back to the bottom. And the bottom's going to receive it. He's going to send it back to the top. And I could go on forever and ever and ever until the switches actually implode. Well, they won't physically implode, but they will crash. My network will grind to a halt. This is what's known as a broadcast storm, and it is very, very bad. We will go into the broadcast storms on some other videos. I'll actually show you what a broadcast storm actually looks like. But obviously, we need to prevent the storm from happening in the first place. And that's um, what switches do. They prevent loops. And they um, use a technology known as spanning tree. And all spanning tree does is it logically breaks the link between the two switches. It will break one of those uh, redundant links to prevent the loop from forming in the first place. And obviously, uh, should the main link go down, spanning tree will allow or will re-enable um, the link that is actually blocked. And we'll talk about spanning tree in great detail in a number of different videos um, on, um, in this series. Okay. Well, my name is Paul. I'd like to thank you for your time and sincerely hope you choose the LearningNet as your IT training center of choice. Thank you.